Hello YouTube, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about T. ocelicata, otherwise known as the peacock gudgeon. It's a great little fish with a lot of color and a little bit of personality, so stay tuned and you're going to learn a lot more about it. Alright, so here you see uh, some peacock gudgeons. I've got both a male and two females in this tank. In the back you will also see there are some eggs tumbling. You're looking at a male here. And so in terms of size, the males, uh, at least for me, the male is about two inches, maybe two and a half inches at most. Uh, females stay slightly smaller. Uh, they're usually around an inch and three quarters, maybe two inches. Uh, you see the male here, he's got a nuchal hump, so he's got a little bump on the top of his head. Uh, a little bit more brightly colored than a female. And so again, this is a real nice picture. You see the yellows and the oranges and a little bit of the pink. The females... They have very similar coloring. They're also very beautiful fish, as you see here. Perhaps the two things that set them apart, actually there's three things. You see the black line uh, in, in that bottom part of the fin? They have that. Uh, the females also tend to be more rounded in the abdominal area, especially if they're carrying a lot of eggs. Um, they also, they're also missing that nuchal hump that the males have, kind of like that bump on the top of their head. So there's the male coming into the picture right there. So you can see there is a difference between the two. Also, again, males are going to be a little bit larger. Uh, their colors tend to be a little bit more vibrant as well. Uh, they're peaceful fish. And so whether they're males or females, they tend to uh, interact well with your standard sort of tank mates, you know, your standard tropical fish. Uh, of course, the thing you have to keep in mind is size. They tend to stay relatively small. And so if you're going to be keeping them with larger fish, you have to be careful because if this fish will fit in a larger fish's mouth, chances are it will become fish food. So uh, choose your tank mates appropriately based on size. And I would also choose tank mates that are relatively non-aggressive. If you get more aggressive tank mates in there, these fish definitely have a tendency to be bullied. Uh, but they are peaceful. They're great fish. Up in the corner, you see a very old female. She's about, boy, I'd say right now three and a half years old, maybe older. You can see she's, you know, she's, uh, she's definitely aged. Uh, now, in terms of, you know, water parameters and things like that, temperature, I typically keep them right around 76 to 77, maybe 78. Uh, they seem to enjoy that. You can see the eggs tumbling here, and the little, little black spots you see on all the all the eggs, those are the eyes, eye spots. So uh, just pull these away from the male. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But in terms of, again, water temperatures, you, you, you do pretty well with somewhere between 75 and 77. Uh, pH, again, my tanks, the pH is pretty high. Uh, so my pH gets around 7.7, 7.8, and it stays pretty consistent, and they, they're doing fine. Obviously, they're, they're breeding. The fry are surviving, as we'll see in a few seconds. So that pH uh, tends to work out pretty well. Uh, water hardness, again, uh, water hardness is going to be, for me, it's somewhere in the 300 TDS and again, you know, with the nitrites and ammonia being zero, this would be a fish. And here you see some fry that are about two and a half months old. This is a fish that would not do well if you've got uh, ammonia or nitrites in the tank. It needs to be a well-cycled tank. And nitrates, I try to keep, you know, below 40 parts per million. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, the tanks that you see here, they look... A little on the overgrown side but I have found tanks that look like this are the best tanks you can have for growing fry and these guys are doing quite well this original batch that you're looking at here we started with about 30 and we still have about 30 so they like that uh, there's microorganisms when they're really small that they can pull off of all those surfaces and then as they get larger uh, you can feed them other things so in terms of what uh, an average size peacock gudgeon will eat pretty much everything. Flake foods, pellets, uh, the freeze-dried blood worms, brine shrimp, frozen foods, you know, like blood worms and brine shrimp. Uh, tank size, what we're looking at here are a couple of 20 gallons that are side by side, but you could probably fit a couple of peacock gudgeons in a, in a 10 gallon, certainly a pair. Uh, if you had a couple males in a 10 gallon, I'm not so sure that would work. You know, males might be a little bit aggressive towards one another. Uh, in terms of what you should put in the tank like to decorations things like that uh, wood would certainly be nice nice addition as would things like caves they will tend to hang out in caves from time to time rock work lots of plants whether it's live plants or plastic plants or what have you but those are all 
really good options. They like a little bit of cover, and believe it or not, they tend to do better with a well-established, well-planted tank. They actually come out more uh, in cases like that. Now, in terms of breeding, what you've seen is we've got a few different things going on. We've got the adults, the adult male and the two females, and then we have the eggs tumbling, and so um, we saw the eggs are incredibly tiny. In fact, with the egg tumbler that I was using, uh, you could see um, in the back corner, it came with a, a little grating system, and the first time I poured eggs in that egg tumbler, the eggs went right through. Uh, they were too small to be caught, so I actually had to use a, a shrimp net, and I put the shrimp net over the the piece of plastic that kept the eggs from moving through and so they were confined to the egg tumbler and so uh, yeah they've been tumbling for you know in, in this video a couple of days or so what's going to happen is the the male is going to find his cave and kind of uh, get the female to go into that cave and then they'll the female and the male will stay in that cave for a day or two and then the male will kick the female out after the eggs have been laid and fertilized and then that male will stay in there and fan the eggs for around six or seven days typically until the the eggs hatch now it gets really tricky in terms of what to do with the fry or what to do with the eggs once that process happens now i have found that at least for the fish that i have they prefer caves that are actually only open on one end as opposed to having like a pvc pipe where you've got two open ends uh, they didn't breed in those at all but once i put those those caves in there where they were closed at at one end we started getting lots of batches of eggs now the fry care um, like I just mentioned it's a little bit tough to deal with because the the male who's fanning the eggs sometimes he just eats them so it's you know it's one of these things where if I let that pair continually do their thing um, what's what, what will happen if you just leave them unattended they'll have the they'll fertilize the eggs and just about that time when the eggs are going to start to hatch the male seems to eat them all and so to avoid that at least what we found is after about three or four days of those eggs being fanned by the male I will usually uh, pull those out put them in an egg tumbler because if I don't do that the male just eats them certainly after the fry hatch they will become fish food so and they're incredibly tiny they're very difficult to see of all the fish that we have in our fish room those fry are by far the smallest and at that point um, if they're not removed that like I said they're going to be eaten by any fish that's in there including the parents so it's best again remove them put them in an egg tumbler if you can and then that will help survival rates uh, after they hatch, uh, we feed them live baby brine shrimp, and caring for the fry can be a challenge as well because they won't eat, uh, at least in my experience, they don't eat prepared foods. They won't eat flakes. They won't eat powdered foods. I tried everything, uh, powdered bloodworms, powdered brine shrimp, uh, crushed flakes, crushed pellets. They wouldn't eat it. Uh, we've had to eventually go to live baby brine, which they eat uh, very well. And so they do eat the the crushed baby, or I'm sorry, the live baby brine. But uh, now, in the in the picture that you saw with the with the uh, juveniles, now we have to start transitioning them over to things like pellets and flakes and things like that. And so we found with the pellets, like micro pellets, they're starting to take to that a little bit, and we'll eventually wean them off of the live baby brine. But that is in live foods. Foods that move are an absolute must for raising the fry, at least um, from what I've seen. And again, the fry are absolutely tiny, so any other fish in the tank will eat them. Uh, also, again, if you've got hang-on-the-back filters or canister filters, those fry will get sucked up with ease. Um, but they're a great fish. They stay small. As you saw from the video, they have wonderful color. They're pretty peaceful. And it's a fish where you could consider adding a couple into a 10-gallon tank. Again, the only stipulation is if you've got multiple males in a 10 gallon tank that may be a problem uh, if there's challenges it really comes with raising the fry so if you're not interested in breeding these fish then I wouldn't worry about it it's going to be a great fish that gives you a lot of color a small fish that are relatively inexpensive uh, you might be able to pick them up for anywhere between five and ten dollars a piece at a fish store depending on your market uh, so it, it's, it's it really is a, a fun little fish so hopefully after hearing about the peacock gudgeon, you like it as much as we do. It's a great little fish. We're really excited to be breeding it and 
and working with it. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe, like the video. It kind of helps us out a little bit. Also, if there's something you'd like to hear about or something you'd like uh, us to do a video over, please leave that in the comments section. We'll, we'll try to do that as long as we feel like we've got something to offer. But we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next one.